Hello everyone, this is Chris from Spoon Graphics, back with another video tutorial for Adobe Photoshop. Today I'm going to show you a series of filters and adjustments you can apply to your artwork to give it an old aged print effect. The aesthetics of low cost printing methods in the mid 20th century is associated with retro comics, magazines and matchbook prints. Ink bleed, misregistration and visible half tone dot patterns are all side effects of cheap offset printing on cheap paper stock. But those visual traits that were once defects from the printing process are now desired effects to give modern artwork the appearance of a retro print. Follow these steps in Adobe Photoshop to turn your crisp digital designs into nostalgic retro prints. We'll add filters that replicate the appearance of high ink absorption with irregular edges and bleeding corners. Convert all colours into half turned screens, separate and offset the black areas as if the printing plate is misaligned. Then we'll finish off the effect with worn ink and paper textures to add the fine details of pulp grain and distressed areas where the print has worn away. But first, if you're thinking of building your own design portfolio, grab a .design domain name for your website and email address and get the first year free with this special offer from Porkbun. A design domain name is just like .com or .net, but it's much more relevant to what we do as designers, making it ideal for building a memorable brand and showcasing your work. Design domains are fairly new, so there's still plenty of short .design names available. Search for your design domain name by following the link in the description and claim it for free before it's gone. Since this tutorial is all about applying effects to a completed design, I've put together some artwork using a sugar skull from one of my old video tutorials, along with some accompanying text and colourful background colours to make the kind of weird and wonderful designs you see on those retro matchbook prints. So flatten your artwork to begin, then make a duplicate of the background layer by dragging it onto the new layer icon, or press the Command and J shortcut or Ctrl and J on Windows. Fill the original background with white using Command and Backspace, then select the artwork layer and convert it to a smart object via the right click menu. This will ensure any filters and effects are applied non-destructively so they can be turned off or edited. The first effect to apply is under Filter, Noise and Median. This will round off the corners of the artwork, which helps mimic how the ink bleeds into the paper. If you go too high with the radius setting, things start to become blurred, so find a value that rounds off the corners without distorting the overall artwork. I'm using 4 pixels. Another filter to eliminate the crisp digital lines is Ripple under the Distort menu. Find a value that adds subtle irregularities to the outlines without being too prominent. 25% works for my artwork. Real prints are made using halftone screens. On old cheap offset prints the halftone dot patterns are visible. Easily add the effect in Photoshop using the filter, pixelate and colour halftone filter. Reduce the max radius to the lowest value of 4, then set all the screen angles to 45 degrees. You could leave these default values for a more realistic halftone pattern, but the effect is more defined at 45 degrees. Double click the slider icon next to the colour halftone effect in the layers panel to edit its blending mode. Change it to soft light to allow the dots to interact with the underlying colours. If you move the colour halftone effect underneath the ripple effect by dragging it in the layers panel, the ripple effect will actually be applied to the dots too, which helps give them a distressed appearance. Click the little eyeball icon next to the colour halftone effect to turn it off for a moment, while we make a selection of the black elements of the artwork to produce the misregistration effect. Now my first thought was to use the select and colour range command to make a selection of all the black elements, but it's difficult to accurately find the right settings to capture every detail. An alternative method I found was to convert the image to CMYK, so the black parts of the artwork are separated under the K channel for key, or black in other words. Go to Image Mode and CMYK, but click No to flatten or rasterize the artwork. In the Channels panel, make a duplicate of the black channel. One problem we have is that CMYK black is not pure Photoshop black, so go to Image Adjustments and Levels and increase the shadows to darken the blacks to a pure 000 hex or RGB value. Hold the command key or control key on Windows and click the thumbnail of the new black channel to load its selection. Switch over to the layers panel and add a layer mask to the artwork layer while the selection is active to mask out all the black areas. The next problem we have is we're left with a fine one pixel outline where the selection was made. 
Use the step backward or undo command to erase the layer mask so the selection is active again. Go to select modify and then choose contract since this is a negative selection. Enter one pixel then apply the layer mask again. Change the artwork back to RGB under the image and mode menu choosing not to flatten or rasterize again. Bring back the visibility of the color half turn effect. Switch over to the channels panel and make another selection of the black copy channel by clicking the thumbnail while holding the command key. Add a new layer then inverse the selection under select and inverse before filling the area with the black foreground color using the shortcut alt and backspace to restore the black artwork but on a separate layer. Press command and D to deselect. This black artwork layer can now be nudged out of place using the keyboard cursor keys to simulate a misregistered print plate effect. Next we'll need some texture assets to distress the artwork further. Download my free pack of subtle grunge concrete textures from Spoon Graphics. Open up any of the textures in Photoshop. Use the shortcuts Command and A to select all, Command and C to copy, Command and W to close the image, then Command and V to paste it into the main document, followed by Command and T to transform. Scale and position the texture so it fills the canvas. Go to Image Adjustments and Invert to flip the texture so the fine details are white against a dark background. In order to make the dark background invisible it needs to be pure black, so use the levels to darken the texture. Change the blending mode of this layer to screen to make the black areas transparent, leaving just the array of white speckles. A quick sharpen filter can help enhance them. Add a levels adjustment layer and adjust the output levels to lighten the darkest areas, making them a dark grey rather than pure black. Make a copy of the layer with the black areas of the artwork and drag it to the top of the layer stack. Reduce its fill value to zero so its contents can't be seen, then double click the layer to bring up the layer style options. Add an inner glow and reset to default values. To make it easier to find suitable settings, temporarily change the glow to a bright colour. You can then alter the choke and size sliders to generate a soft outline around the artwork that doesn't completely fill in too many areas. I'm using 50% choke and 10 pixel size. Set the glow colour back to black to see a subtle outline effect that simulates the plate pressure where the ink is slightly darker with better coverage towards the edges. Finally, open up an old paper texture to simulate the aged paper stock the print is applied to. Even when they were brand new, many old prints were applied to cheap heavy grain paper, but as they've survived over the years they've become yellow and stained. This pack of grungy paper and card textures can also be downloaded for free from Spoon Graphics. Copy and paste the texture into the artwork file, scale it down to fit. Texture 4 has some lines in the texture which I've cropped out. Set the blending mode to multiply to allow the stained paper texture to interact with the underlying artwork. Open up the levels to adjust the contrast of the texture. Bringing in the highlights brightens the texture, while darkening the shadows makes the texture detail more prominent. If the yellow colouring is too intense, reduce the saturation using the image adjustments and hue and saturation tool. Minus 50% takes away the vibrancy while retaining a subtle yellow colour cast. To fine tune the effect, alter the opacity of the layer to tone down the texturing. Adding a quick sharpen filter also helps to bring out the texture of the paper grain too. The final result is a retro style design with all the sought after defects associated with old prints, including ink bleed, misregistration, half turn patterns, distressed textures and paper effects. If you want to add all those effects with just a click of a button, this whole process is available as a Photoshop action from Spoon Graphics. Follow the link in the description to download bad print effects for free. And don't forget to join my mailing list while you're there to get my entire bundle of free resources. As always, thank you very much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.